If you want, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be a best nonfiction book slash recommendation video. I try to divide the ones that are more science related compared to the ones that aren't too much. So this video is going to be that one. Uh, I just wanted to give you kind of the best of the ones that I've read throughout my time on booktube. It's been about four years almost. So it is time for me to share a top kind of 10 and then I'm going to add a few more special mentions and maybe I can actually basically adding a few books that I'm looking forward to reading that are currently on my shelf. So let's go through them. I'm hoping you can't hear my laptop for some reason. It's making the sound of complete like airplane. Why does it sound like an airplane? I don't know why it's freaking out. Uh, let's do this. They're not really in particular order, but maybe I can try to like kind of mush the similar ones together. So like in the historical nonfiction section ish, uh, we're going to start with the radium girls, the dark story of America's shining women. I knew nothing about this whole history thing. Uh, I don't know if it's because I'm Canadian too young, just don't know a lot about history. It's not really my jam. Uh, but I went into this just because I kept seeing the book mentioned in like, you know, best new nonfiction. So I wanted to try it. I did go through it as an audiobook, which I don't really recommend. I don't say that often, but I feel like the audiobook wasn't super great. Uh, I know like for part of uh, the narration, there was a lot of like saliva noises, which is not very pleasant to listen to. So uh, yeah, with that said, I'm not sure I would have finished a book without the audiobook because of how gruesome and almost repetitive it started feeling like, which that sounds terrible. Um, anyway, you're following uh, the story of these women that worked in uh, this factory. Factory, okay. And uh, when we discovered radium, we didn't know anything about, you know, radioactivity, how it would affect the human body. So these women just knew that this paint glowed in the dark. So obviously people wanted to buy this. They wanted to buy watches and clocks that glowed in the dark. It's very practical. So it was just a very exciting discovery. So they would use the paintbrush, but uh, in order to make them very precise, they would put the brush in their mouth, twist it. So obviously radium accumulated in their body, uh, it just tends to accumulate in the bones. So uh, you kind of hear about the horror story that became their life and how uh, a lot of people that knew re realized eventually uh, the consequences were trying to hide it in order to keep making money. And it's absolutely horrible. Anyway, uh, just very, very horrifying. Uh, do not recommend this book if you are sensitive to anything gruesome because quite frankly, I think it's one hour through the audiobook. There's a scene where uh, one of the first women goes to the doctor because she has jaw pain and a doctor just literally touches her jaw and it falls off. So, but hearing these stories, which you kind of have to remind yourself that those are like their true lives, totally horrifying, kind of leaves you wondering also what's the radium of our generation, which that sounds a little bit like a conspiracy theory, but when you hear how much effort was put into trying to like cover it up, it's totally horrifying and it was interesting. Oh, I don't like that word for this book, but I feel like I'm gonna say that for a few books here and like, just hear me out. I definitely mean more like enlightening, just, just, yeah, yeah, there's no better word, but you know what I mean. So uh, if you are into these kind of books, I highly recommend this book. Definitely interesting, for sure. The next one in the same category would be The Mortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. If you have any kind of background in science, you probably have heard of the Ella cells, which were actually stolen from this woman. In this book, you're following kind of her life, her death, then you kind of follow uh, her family, and then basically more about uh, Ella cells, which was super interesting. I didn't know anything about her, obviously, because it's been hidden. And Riella Lacks was a black woman in the US who went to the doctor because she was having pain. Turns out she had cancer, cervical cancer, and the doctor took her cells without asking permission. And uh, they essentially started using them to do a lot of research because they were immoral. They would just grow very, very fast, which was practical for science. And, um, her, her family never got any recognition, any money out of this, and they were used, they're still used to do so many discoveries like polio vaccine, cloning, gene mapping, and obviously a lot more. So it's kind of horrifying to hear her story, how they just, you know, never gave her anything. And seeing that her family, which there are pictures actually in the book, still nowadays can't even afford, you know, health insurance, but some people have made millions out of, you know, stealing her cells. So uh, also very interesting. I uh, totally recommend it if you want to learn more about it. Definitely did enjoy that one too. One book that I think everyone, but especially women, would benefit from reading is The Gift of Fear, which I feel like has been well known for a while. Actually, how 
long ago was this published? 1997, it's not that bad. Um, this book, <laughs> this book though, it was recommended to me a few years ago and I actually need to reread this. Essentially, the author reminds us that fear is actually a good thing and we should listen to that little voice inside of us that I feel like, again, women especially were told to not listen to, like to not insult anyone, to always be polite, you know? Like sometimes you'll meet someone and you just don't really trust them, but in order to be polite, you don't say anything, you don't do anything, and how these things get you killed. So uh, the author basically tells you to, you know, F politeness and everything. But I did feel like some of the advices and example in there were very uh, useful, uh, whether to be reminded that, you know, if you're on a date and someone is not taking no for an answer, it's a red flag, be careful, protect yourself. But it also helps you uh, deal with things like if you have a stalker and everything. So I uh, would highly recommend this book if that's something you are into slash. Again, I do think most people would benefit from reading it. So definitely a good nonfiction to pick up. The topic of the next book was definitely fascinating to explore and it is so you've been publicly shamed by John Ronson. This was published in 2015, but I feel like the example seems almost like old because again, in five years on Twitter, a lot of people have tweeted some dumb stuff uh, for sure. <laughs> but uh, the author is basically exploring, like I was saying, people tweeting, like, you know, there was this woman that tweeted something about HIV in Africa. And uh, by the time she got out of her plane ride, uh, she had lost her job and her whole life was a mess. And uh, he's exploring the consequences like right after uh, what they said and how the way they reacted changed the outcome years later or months later. And I thought it was really fascinating to look like, oh, if they were defensive or shameless, you know, the different reaction from the public. Also what the public would do if it was uh, a woman or a man, which not really surprising how after men they would go for a job, for example, and women, it would be a lot of uh, threats of violence and sexual violence. And um, I'm going to stop here, obviously, so you can, you know, still benefit from reading the book. I do recommend the audiobook because the narrator is the author. And for some reason, he's just a little awkward, but like in a wholesome way. <laughs> and it just, I could listen to him talk for hours. He has a couple other books that I did overall enjoy too. Uh, one of them was about psychopath. He just uses the really interesting topic and just does his research. I would definitely recommend uh, this book or any of his other books, although those are the only two I've read. I probably should pick up another one. But yes, I would love actually if it did like a second one because again, I feel like since then, <laughs> there have been a lot more canceling uh, culture going on. And yes, very interesting topic, something very different from any of the books that I've read. So if that's something that uh, you are into, definitely check out this one. Uh, next book I wanted to talk about is Packing for Mars by Mary Roach. She's also an author that takes those like very specific, uh, uncommon topics and just goes for it. This specific one is about astronauts, which was really interesting. Uh, overall, you're probably going to learn more than you ever wanted about how going to the bathroom in space is very complicated, but uh, I'm overall very fascinated about anything to do with space. So for me, that was really interesting. I did say like, this was the non-science related non-fiction video, but you know, it makes sense in my head. But yes, I would definitely recommend any of her books. I did read another one about dead bodies. It was stiff, which <laughs> I would recommend that one too. The author mentioned, was it a scandal in the US that was um, people leaving their body to science and then uh, <laughs> it was discovered that they were used in like car crash tests. So like, Anyway, uh, yes, definitely, again, interesting uh, read. Would totally recommend her books if you are looking for nonfiction that are kind of different. I believe I have another one by her on my shelf about like the afterlife. I think it's called Spook. So I will definitely be reading more of her books for sure. Let's go for memoir. I don't read a lot of them because quite frankly, I don't really care about people that much. I mean, the people that write those books in general, but I have to, to mention that I did overall really enjoy. The first one was The Coming by Michelle Obama. Uh, the book there's like the first part that is like her childhood, which again, not really my cup of tea, but it was still interesting to see where she was coming from and how she uh, was really focused on her education, which basically I'm Canadian, so I didn't know anything. Like she was never, you know, my first lady or anything. I just knew of her. A little bit. So I didn't know anything about her background and I didn't know uh, how educated she was, which was really impressive to learn, and how she was actually never really interested in going to politics. She was pretty much against it. Uh, you learn a little bit of how on how she met her husband, how again she didn't really like him at first, which was funny, and uh, just a lot more about her. Honestly, it just made me respect and admire her 
a ton more. Frankly, I don't know how she dealt with everything that she dealt with. Uh, but yes, if you are uh, interested, definitely highly recommend that one. I mean, it's a very, very popular nonfiction. Like on Goodreads, there's almost half a million ratings. So it's a popular book, but definitely worth a read. I did actually listen to that one as an audiobook, which was uh, narrated by her. So again, would recommend it that way. Same thing with my next book, which is Born a Crime, Stories from a South African Childhood by Trevor Noah. So he's also narrating his own book and I would highly recommend it. Obviously, Trevor Noah is super charismatic. Definitely uh, translate into the narration of the book. I don't think I would have enjoyed the book nearly as much if he wasn't the one narrating it. And like by Born a Crime being that uh, if they had been found out, I think it was like five years in prison that would have happened uh, for his parents because his dad was a white Swiss man, I think. And uh, yeah, he's just making a lot of jokes. Uh, you hear a lot about his childhood, his relationship with his mom, mom especially, which seems to be quite interesting. And yes, definitely another book that I would highly recommend if you are into those type of memoir books. One about mental illness, I would recommend uh, Furiously Happy, a funny book about horrible things by Jenny Lawson. She has two different books. I think the first one is Let's Pretend This Never Happened, which I did enjoy also, but I actually read this one first, which is her second book. Uh, and between the two, I think this one is the one that I liked the most. Uh, basically, the author uh, explains how she's trying to deal with uh, a lot of mental illnesses and how she's trying, no matter what, to live, you know, furiously happy. And like it says in the title, it's like a lot of funny stories about like some serious stuff. And uh, I just could connect with some of the stories. And I think a lot of people that uh, are looking for more information about these topics would definitely benefit from reading that book. I definitely did enjoy it. And if you do enjoy that one, again, would recommend the other one too. I also wanted to recommend uh, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie as an author, um, specifically two books by her that I read and enjoyed. The first one being We Should All Be Feminists, which is technically a TED talk that was made into a book afterwards, but it's just so cute I needed to own it. Uh, I would highly recommend actually listening to her if you get a chance in any interview or again that TED talk because she's just super charismatic. And uh, I feel like she just has the capacity of explaining those really complex topics like feminism in like a, such an easy, understandable way. Um, and it's just, again, very interesting to see. So in this one, she basically explains how she became a feminist. And then there's also uh, Dear Ija Willie, I think. A Feminist Manifesto and 15 Suggestions, which is basically a letter that uh, she writes to her friend's daughter when she was born, basically. And I just would highly recommend both of these if you are someone that wants to learn more about feminism or just, you know, enjoy these type of readings. I actually need to read more about her. I have one of her fiction books on my shelf, which I need to get around to reading. But yes, definitely would recommend her books for sure. Now let's go into the uh, most recommendations slash more special mentions section. The first one I wanted to mention is very famous that it is Sapien, A Brief History of Humankind, which is, like the title says, about humanity. Uh, it begins like from the beginning of humanity to nowadays. I know he has a second book that I do have actually on my shelf about like the future of humanity, which I have to get to eventually. It was a very interesting topic. I feel like especially the beginning really blew my mind. To be honest, afterwards it becomes a bit more about um, kind of politics, religion and economy, which not really my main jam, but still interesting. The author, be warned, is not afraid of like telling you how he personally feels about it, is the only complaint that I've heard about this book. Uh, but yes, definitely fascinating if that's a topic you are into. Uh, anything that has to do with World War II. <laughs> to be honest, these books always break my heart. Uh, I especially wanted to mention A Men's Search for Meaning, which I feel like is one of the most popular books on the topic, actually. Night is also something I would recommend. Uh, in this one, uh, the author starts by explaining his uh, experience in con concentration camps, which was obviously horrifying to read. And basically how having, you know, a meaning, a reason to survive help these people. So uh, again, interesting read, kind of similar things with this one, basically uh, the author sharing his experience. I believe there are two other books actually uh, on this topic for him. I also wanted to mention When Breath Becomes Air, which is uh, the story of a neur neurosurgeon that is diagnosed with uh, stage four lung cancer. And it was really interesting to see how he dealt with being the patient as a doctor. And um, be warned, most people cry when they read this book. I was okay until the end in the section that his wife wrote. That's where I lost it. So um, 
would recommend it. It's a pretty short read. It's about 200 pages. And again, it's a very famous one, but I do think it's worth a read. Another one that was really difficult to go through is Not That Bad, which is a, an anthology about rape culture. Uh, a bunch of different people wrote their experiences and uh, I do feel like you will find at least one story in there that uh, you will personally connect with. Again, very difficult to go through, but I thought was <sighs> interesting. I'm gonna start resenting that word, but yes, definitely worth a read. The next one seems to be fairly controversial for some reason, but it's also very popular and I did enjoy it. And it is educated by Tara Westover. Uh, you're following the life story of the author as she grew up in Idaho. Yes. Uh, basically living with a family that was, uh, they were like survivalists, basically uh, canning and, you know, preparing for the end of the world and how she went from being homeschooled there to having a PhD. Be warned, uh, a lot of abuse. Honestly, if it weren't for the audiobook, again, I don't think I would have finished it because there are specific sections that were just absolutely horrifying to read or in my case listen to so i probably would have put the book down and never picked it up again so again be warned but it was still real interesting and then last but not least i wanted to give a quick shout out to invisible women data bias in a world designed for mine so we all know obviously women are you know half the population but it's kind of crazy how the world is not made for them in a lot of things for example if you go just with seat belts and cars they're not made for women uh usually it results in more um injuries and death whenever there are car accidents. There's also the fact that very often uh, women will not be test subject whenever a medication is being tested. And obviously there, there are reasons, you know, hormones and everything, which makes sense, but it still means that often we don't know the effects on women. And it has happened that uh, there were some pretty horrifying consequences because of that. So a lot of things like that, which are again, interesting, but man, is it frustrating to read. And super quickly, because this video is going to be very, very long, I wanted to mention three books that are currently on my physical TBR that I do want to read. Uh, the first one, I mentioned it quickly earlier, so let's do this right now. This is Omodius, A Brief History of Tomorrow, which is, like I was saying, kind of part two of this book, so for the future. Definitely interested in reading that one very soon. Uh, I have On Writing by Stephen King, which is um, part biography, part collection of tips for the aspiring writer. I feel like I've heard really good things about this one. And then finally, I have In Order to Live, A North Korean Girl's Journey to Freedom. So this is going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up, subscribe if you want to not miss out on future videos. I will be putting more actually on the screen that I recommend you check out. And don't forget to actually let me in the comment section uh, if you have read any of these, what you thought about them, or if you have any other recommendations of non-science-ish, <laughs> non-fiction that you think I would enjoy or other people would. And I will see you in my next video very soon. Bye.